Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with iSoft Stone, and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the process of creating a master detail view in Excel 2007. Today I'm going to be using Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 to create a console application, which we're going to use then to control or automate Microsoft Office Excel 2007 to create a workbook which will contain several different worksheets that will allow us to implement our master detail view functionality. So the first thing I'm going to do is to come in here in Visual Studio and choose to create a new project. And I'm going to do it in C Sharp today and again we're going to create a Windows console application. I'm going to name it master detail view. Okay, now that we've created the solution in Visual Studio, the next thing I'm going to do is to add a reference to the Microsoft Office Excel 2007 primary interop assembly. So I'm going to come in here and in the Solution Explorer, right click on References and choose to add a reference. And on the .NET tab, I'm going to scroll down and choose the primary interop assembly for Microsoft Office Excel 2007 right here, version 12, and say OK and Visual Studio goes ahead and adds a reference to the interop assembly. And I'm going to come in here and add a using statement that will make it easy for us to then use the classes and types to find in that namespace without having to specify the fully qualified namespace path each time. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the Visual Studio generated code with our own and then let's walk through and take a look at what the code's doing. So first thing it does is it declares some variables um, that we will use when working with the different Excel objects that we need to make use of. Um, we declare some variables for our workbook name and our three worksheet names. We have a worksheet called customer which is going to hold customer data, order which will hold order data for those customers, and finally the order report worksheet which will contain our master detail view of those two sets of data. So the code next comes along, creates an instance of Excel, and then uses that instance to create the workbook and add the three worksheets to it. It then calls a couple of helper methods, add customer data and add order data to add customer and order data to those worksheets. If we take a look at the add customer data method, we see that it takes the worksheet to add the data to and returns a table that contains, in this case here, customer data. Um, we name the table customer data after creating it via the add method off the list objects collection on the worksheet. Um, the customer data table contains five columns, name, phone, address, city, and state for each customer. Um, and then we go ahead and insert three rows into um, the customer data table, customer or company A, company B, and company C. We take a similar approach with the add order data helper method, takes the worksheet to add the data to, returns a table with the order data in it. Table's name is order data. Again, we use the same approach to add it. Um, the table has, in this case here, six columns, order number, date, customer, amount, shipping, and status. Customer is the link um, between the customer data and the order data based on the customer name. Um, we then go ahead and add some ordered data for those different customers. Once we've gone ahead and created our worksheets and added data to them, the code up here in the main method then goes ahead and sets up the reporting sheet. Um, first thing it does is it creates a named range called customer names for use down below. Um, the customer names named range points at column one in the customer table that was created up above in our helper method, um, which basically contained the name of customers. Um, the next section here, the next lines of code, go ahead and create the um, user interface to let the user filter on which customer it is they want to view the data for. Um, so we create a named range called customer selection in cell C1, um, and then the way we provide the UI to let the user select which customers they want to filter on is by adding validation to that named range. Um, we add a validate list type validation to it and it's based on the customer names named range. Customer names is again created up here. So what this is going to cause to happen is when the user clicks on cell C1 uh, for the customer selection named range cell, they're going to get a drop down list that's going to be populated with the list of customer names coming from the customer data. So once we set up the um, reporting sheet, or rather the UI to let the user filter, um, we then go ahead and create the display of the master part of the data display. Um, so we create some labels for the data we're going to display, name, phone, address, city, and state. Um, and then we insert some formulas using the VLOOKUP and MATCH functions to, based on the current customer selection, pull from the customer data um, the name, the phone, address, city, and state for a given customer and display that. Um, the next thing the code does is it sets up the detail 
portion of the data display, creates some header values for order number, date, amount, shipping total, and status, and then goes ahead and creates a single row with formulas in it to pull back um, the order data based on the currently selected customer and display the order number, the date, um, and the amount, shipping, and total and status rather data for um, the orders for the currently selected customer. Once it's done that for one row goes ahead then the code copies down um, that first row over the next 20 rows to give us the ability to display up to 20 orders for any given selected customer. And then finally the code goes ahead and saves the workbook using the variable um, that we defined up above to specify the path and name of the workbook. Okay so let's go ahead and build our application here. If we go ahead and build and run it, it ran, and so it should have gone ahead and created our master detail view.xlsx files, which it did just create in our temp folder. So if we go ahead and open that up in Microsoft Excel, right now we're looking at our workbook called master detail view.xlsx. It contains three worksheets, customer order and order report. Um, we're looking at the order report worksheet, which contains our master detail view of our data. Right now we have company A selected, so we're seeing the master or customer information for company A. And then down here we see the detail or order related information for company A. And if we come again over here and take a look, here we see our table with our customer information. We see our customer A, and then we have in our order worksheet, we have our order status, or rather our order details for our different companies. So like we look at company A, it has um, companies, or rather orders in the amount of 100, 200, and 150. 100, 200, 150. So we go ahead and we see that we have the right information displayed for company A. Here's the user interface by using our validation of list type on our uh, cell C1 here. We're able to let the user select the customer that they want to filter on. So if we choose customer company B, we now notice that then based on that selection, then the master information is displayed here for company B with their customer details. And then we have our two orders in this case here, 221 and 222 for company B, um, 221 and 222. And the same thing for company C. Again, we get our master detail functionality working correctly there. With As we select a different customer, we get the related order information, the detail information displayed as well. So by using Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 and Excel 2007 via the primary interop assembly um, and using a combination of VLOOKUP, MATCH, and other functions, we were able to pretty easily create a master detail view of data that was located in a couple of different Excel worksheets and create a master detail view worksheet based on that data.